Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, for those that were looking to do uh, Bible study, get into the Word more, um, here's a video as promised. We're going to start reading through Ephesians together. And um, if you've got uh, got a Bible, um, go and grab it, get it, get it ready. If you're using your your phone app, um, um, get it out. And I'm, what we're going to do is I'm just going to work through Ephesians. And sometimes we might read a, a little bit more than other times, just depending on on how much or how far we get. Um, so um, we're just going to read through a little bit of this and I'm going to just to encourage you and then it's down to you guys to go away and, and read it more and sort of pull more out of it for yourselves and write down notes. If you haven't got um, a journal yet, get a journal. So just get like a little notebook. I've got I've got quite a few of them around somewhere. And get like a notebook where on even on a Sunday you can just write down things so you won't forget them. So sometimes you can hear something and think, oh, that's amazing. I, I really needed that or or like, oh, that's a really profound statement. And then we forget it. So get get a notepad um, or journal and um, and write down sort of what you find as well. So it's not just about what I'm saying to you right now, but it's also about what um, uh, what you find and and you can kind of write it down in your journal. And then and then amazingly, what happens when we journal? When we look back on that, it's it can be at the right moment we just needed to read that again. So really encourage you to get a journal if you haven't got a journal. Um, so we're going to read through this. So it's Ephesians from chapter one. I'm just going to pray quickly. Uh, Father, I just thank you, Father, for the heart and the hunger of people to want to read your word more, knowing how important it is to their walk with you. Sometimes we don't know where to start and sometimes we, we struggle with with even reading or understanding. And, and um, the Bible is not always the easiest thing to understand. So, Father, I just thank you that the reason for this very, this very video is just because there was such a hunger from people to want to read the word more. So I pray, Lord, that these times together, these videos would really um, encourage and 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 impart some some kind of knowledge and understanding of your word to encourage uh, those that want to read your word more to do it more frequently and not just through these videos, but actually in their own time, they'll just be able to read it more and more um, themselves. So, Lord, I, I just I just pray, uh, have your way with these times and lead us and guide us in Jesus name. Amen. OK, so maybe you'll get a little bit of insight into how I kind of work when it comes to preparing a message on a Sunday, because I if you're like anyone like me, um, I would listen to somebody that was preaching or someone on YouTube or or whatever and I'll be like man they are so good at that I don't know how they read the Bible like that I don't even know how they even found that story and things like that so I was there once where I was just like I don't know how how you can make something that's written then be relevant to now and and how, how do you even see that even when they've shown me it's there I can't I couldn't even see it um but I think just over time God just starts to to bring the word to life more and the more we read it um the more that happens so hopefully you'll get a bit of insight into how I can read the word and and um, how I translate that into a Sunday. And that might encourage you or help you to read the word and then also bring it into the relevant situation you're in uh, as well. So let's go. So Ephesians 1 verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Jesus Christ. Grace to you, peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, this is a letter from Paul to the church in Ephesus. And in verse three, it says, blessed be the, the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. I think, I think this first bit is really important. And Paul does this a lot in his letters before he gets to like the, 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 the information he wants to give or before he starts um, starts on this journey of whatever he's going to write. He's always giving glory to God. And we talk about being intentional. I just pray and that we would all learn how to wake up in the morning and be intentional in giving God the praise before we've even started. Even if it's, even if you're dreading the day, even if it's, you're not sure, even if you've gone to bed and there's, you're worried about something like 
that actually when we wake up, the first thing that we do is we just say, like, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Like, praise you, God, for, for, for you have blessed us with everything that we need, every spiritual blessing. We've got it um, in Jesus Christ. And, and I think even though we don't always feel that, it doesn't make the statement not true. So maybe being more intentional in praising God will enable us to receive more from him. And also set our day up different, because if we put him where he's supposed to be, the stuff that we're looking at, which sometimes seems really big, can actually become a lot less. Um, so it's just a good life lesson. And then it says this, he chose us in him before the foundations of the world, that we would be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons in Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise and glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. This is such a great, uh, there's so much in this, but the first line, he chose us in him before the foundations of the world. I say this a lot on a Sunday, but just let that resonate with you. For all your faults, all the negativity that we speak over ourselves, all the mistakes we make, all the, all the, uh, the past that we've got, the track record, the the the, the falling on our face, the, the things that we've done, the things that have happened to us, the things we maybe make us feel dirty, like all these things that just we put on ourselves and we say, I'm not um I'm not worthy or I'm not good enough or I'm 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 lower than low and all these things that we speak, we really need to understand that if you have come to Christ, like if you've if, if you've come to the place where some somehow you were able to uh, be introduced to Jesus, like whether it's like on a Sunday gathering where someone's saying, would you like to start that relationship with Jesus? Or whether some of you have met him in your bedroom or on the street chatting to maybe someone that was preaching or whatever it might be. Like if that has happened to you, you need to understand that it says he chose us in him before the foundations of the world. Meaning that even though he knew how you were going to mess up, even though he knew how how it wasn't going to work out all the time for you, even though he knew that you're going to fall on your face and, and, and make mistakes and let him down and all these different things that, that we all label ourselves with, he still chose you. And this is such an important statement that we have to let resonate within us when we get a bit low on ourselves, when we start feeling like, oh, maybe I've got, I'm not doing enough. God can't love me because of who I am. Like all these different things. If you are in Christ, he has chosen you and he chose you. He set that up before he even breathed the universe into existence. The foundations of the earth. How incredible is that? That God still went ahead and created you despite your flaws, despite your mistakes, despite the fact that you don't always give him uh, the attention he deserves. He didn't think, oh, do you know what? They're not going to give me enough. Do you know what? They're going to make too many mistakes. Do you know what? They're going to let me down too many times. He doesn't, he didn't look at all that and say, do you know what? I'm not going to bother with that one. If you're here, you're breathing and you have the revelation that Jesus Christ is Lord, you have been chosen. That's pretty special. What, a, what an incredible statement and understanding to have. Just let that resonate within you right now. Just let that just settle in you. And just, if you're feeling a bit rubbish about yourself, if you're feeling a little bit like, man, I don't know. Just get rid of that junk because it's all nonsense. And really take hold of this passage right now. He chose me. Despite all of that. He chose you despite all the mistakes you're going to make. He chose you. Just let that resonate. Just let that settle. And maybe the start of the day or whatever, whatever time it is you read this and just puff our chest out a little bit more. I think I'm chosen. I am chosen. Chosen by God. He selected me. He he knew I was going to be this person. He knew I was going to make these mistakes. And yet he still has called me out and he chose me and he did it 
before he even created me. He didn't wait to see what it was going to look like. He didn't. He didn't sort of think, "Oh, we'll give him. We'll give him a trial." He chose you before the world was breathed into existence. Jesus has adopted that we've been adopted by Jesus Christ, and we have been accepted into the beloved, into the Trinity, into the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. These are great things. And these things have happened because Jesus has seen us, he has called us, and we answered that call. Praise God that you answered that call. Praise God that you were able to bat away the temptations of the world, that you were able to push away um, lifestyles and, and even maybe even people that were of influence and still say, I need Jesus. So I want to just bless you there. It's been 10 minutes already. Wow. Um, I'm just going to leave it there and bless you. I know that we haven't read that much, but sometimes we might only need to read a little. Um, and I hope that's encouraged you. I hope that set you up. Maybe go and read a little bit more of it. Maybe just let that dissect and just and just wash over you. Start the day praising God. Start the day lifting his name so that what maybe is a lot bigger to you right now will become a lot smaller. And also start walking in the understanding that you have been chosen by God despite your flaws, mistakes, hang-ups. He chose you. And I think for me, when I feel like that is actually the truth, I walk around different. I don't make as many mistakes. Not because I'm trying to achieve something with God because I am privileged to be here and I really want to walk worthy of the calling he's given me. So bless you guys. I hope this has encouraged you. Day one of, of reading through Ephesians together. Oh, I nearly forgot. Karina said, can we do a proverb too? So I'm just gonna like find proverbs and grab one, all right? This could be interesting because proverbs is like, can be crazy. So we're just going to finish with our, what's our proverb for the day. Let's have a look. Okay. So Proverbs 12 verse 26 it says the righteous should choose his friends carefully for the way of the wicked leads them astray pretty self-explanatory but maybe someone needs to know that today choose your friends carefully this is the bible because the wicked can lead people astray and we see it so many times with people that are starting off in faith they put the wrong people around them and and suddenly they're drifting away from jesus so Proverb of the day, 12, 26. Bless you guys. Get into your word. Keep going. Stay intentional. Keep staying intentional. See you soon. God bless.